What's going on everyone? So in this video, we'll be connecting our Node.js application to a database. So we'll be using MongoDB and this will allow us to store data since we'll soon start working on leveling systems and even an economy bot. First, let's start by looking at how we'll set up our MongoDB database. There's actually two ways. Both, in my opinion, are really simple. The first is you can host a database server locally on your computer. This is what I usually do, but you can also create a database using MongoDB Atlas. We'll be using the second option in this video since you won't have to deal with installing MongoDB on your computer. Let's start by going to cloud.mongodb.com. And if you haven't registered, it's going to redirect you to the login page. I'm going to log in with my Google account, so I'm going to skip this part. Now, if this is your first time using MongoDB cloud services, you'll have to accept the terms. So click on that and click on submit. The next thing they're going to ask you is what you're going to use MongoDB Atlas for. You don't really have to answer this. Just go to cloud.mongodb.com again. And now you'll be on your main dashboard. Over here, click on build a database and it's going to show you the pricing. Of course, we're not going to pay for anything. So just click on create under the free option. Now from here, you'll be asked to choose where you want to create your server using what service. I'll just use AWS and I'm going to choose Cape Town for my server location. Under the cluster tier area, you'll see we get 512 MB of storage, which to be honest is a decent bit, especially considering that it's free. If for some reason 512 MB is not enough for you, then you need to install MongoDB locally. For our cluster name, I'm going to set this to discord-bot-yt. And then I'm going to click on create cluster. Now inside here, you'll be asked to create a user, which we'll be able to use in order to connect to our database. So I'm going to set my username to not under control, and I'm going to auto generate a password and save it somewhere. Once that's done, just click on create user. Now going down, we'll have to tell MongoDB what IP addresses can access this database. Now this is important. If you're going to deploy your bot to a server, then you'll have to add your server's IP address here in order to whitelist it. However, there's also a way to allow all IP addresses to connect to this database by using 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0. And in the description, we'll say whitelist all addresses. Now this is not recommended and during production, I highly recommend that you change this. Anyway, I'm going to click on add entry. Once done, we can click on finish and close. And then I can just uncheck this and click on go to databases. Now for me, my server has been provisioned, but it may take a few minutes for yours to be set up. Anyway, now we can minimize our browser. Make sure you don't close it since we'll come back to this in a bit. Inside VS Code, we're now going to connect to our database. Now the plan here is inside our index.js file, before executing the event handler function, we first want to connect to our database. To do that, we're going to install a library called Mongoose. So open up your terminal and type npm install Mongoose. With that done, we can import it at the top. So let's say const Mongoose require Mongoose. Now, what we want to do is before this event handler function, let's create an immediately invoked function expression. This function will be executed immediately so we can pass our event handler function inside of it. Now we're going to make this function async because we want to connect to our database. Before the event handler function, let's say await mongoose.connect. And this is where you'd pass in your connection string. However, we have to get that from our MongoDB Atlas dashboard. So head back to your browser. In your dashboard where you have your database, click on connect. And now it's going to give you a bunch of connection methods. We want to choose the second one, which is connect your application. Now over here, you'll be given a connection string. What you want to do is copy this and head back to VS Code. Now you can paste your connection string over here like this. However, it is recommended that you put it as an environment variable. Now head to your .env file. Of course, I'm not going to open the file because I have my bot token and stuff in there. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my .env.example file, which is a replica of my .env file. However, make sure that you're actually making these changes inside your .env file and not .env.example. After this part of the video, I'll just go ahead and modify the original file. Anyway, inside the env file, what we're going to do is create a new environment variable called mongodb uri, and we'll set this to the string that we copied earlier. 
However, you'll notice where it says password. We'll have to change that to the password that we copied earlier when creating the user. So highlight the password, including the less than and greater than sign and replace it with your own password. Once that is done, save your file and close out of it. Now inside your index.js, where we're connecting to the database, we can set our connection string inside mongoose.connect to process.env.mongodb underscore URI. With that set, we need to pass in another argument, which is an object, and it'll have the property called keep alive, and we'll set this to true. Under this, we'll add a console log saying connected to DB. Now, in case there is any errors when connecting to the database, we need to catch that. So let's cut this whole thing and wrap it inside try catch block. Inside the catch block, we can console log the error. Now let's save the file and try running our bot. I'm going to use Nodemon, however, you can use Node directly if you don't have Nodemon installed. Okay, so when starting our bot, we are getting a deprecation warning. So what we're going to do is, as it says in the message, we'll set the strict query to false. So before connecting to the database, just paste that over here. Now, if we save our file, you'll see we don't get that warning anymore. And now it connects to the database and our bot comes online. In the next video, we'll be getting started with the leveling system. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. If you guys are having any issues, then make sure to join the Discord, which I'll have linked down below.